What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode eight of Overthinking Media. I'm your host, Michael, joined by Harry. Hello. And John. Hi. How are we this week? Yeah. Uh, yeah. T- I'm just tired. It's, it's been a week. It's been a very sad week. <laughs> We're in mourning because uh, good old Stan Lee uh, passed away. Stan the man. Do we know what of? I don't actually know. Uh, I, from, I haven't actually read stuff, but from what I understand, he was rushed to hospital. Hmm. Yeah, and oh. I haven't I haven't read the articles. So I'm guessing it's just we did well there. Let's mm-hmm. talk about Stanley. And he, no well, well, research. we haven't really looked too much into it. it only happened yesterday, oh, and yeah. he just he was 95, I, a good yeah. age. Well, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, and my brother messaged me from uh, Las Vegas actually, and when he, when he when I say this, he doesn't like you know. He meant it in a good way. He said, well, at least he got to shoot his last cameo. And I know you mentioned it as well. Well, yeah, it is a little bit like... In Infinity War. It, it's it's going to be... Unless he's done Spider-Man Homecoming. Not, not he Homecoming. Prob- he probably Far has. Home. He probably has, yeah. He probably has. But I think it would be a nice send-off if they ended this arc, which is ending with... Infinity War Infinity Part War Part 2, or whatever it's called, with the last Stanley cameo. Because cameo, that would be... A nice. He got to put the full stop on his career. Yeah. By being like he he made his characters into comic books, which turned into cartoons, which turned into movies, which turned into better movies, which turned into movies that have taken over the world, <laughs> and he gets to put a full stop on the end of the first massive I, yeah. overarching mm. story. I still think he's gonna, like John said, appear in Spider Man, and they're gonna CGI him from from then on, or they'll oh, put right, him in yes. some way, right, or maybe yeah. his daughter. Because he's got a daughter, as and he maybe she'll appear, or somebody mm. else will appear. So he'll be around, I reckon, because yeah. he's he's like a legacy. Because mm. what was what was funny? Uh, there was like a just just um, he was supposed to be a watcher, wasn't he? One of those. Well, they say that he, that's how they like his character was appearing in everything. Because in Guardians of the Galaxy, when two. they're doing Guardians of the Galaxy two, when they're doing the warps, he goes past the the watchers. He's and sitting with him, isn't he? And the watchers the watch are, are the watchers are those interdimen- like interdimensional beings that watch over all of the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all like, of the universes. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they're like gods. That yeah, they don't yeah. intervene. They just watch. They just watch. So the yeah. idea is all these cameos are just him there watching, watching all these yeah. events happen. Right. So which I think is really cool. Like yeah. it, it's a great. Yeah, it's a great <clears> little. <throat> Easter egg. Little Easter egg, and because so. he explains, he went, and this one time I delivered. It. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. he kind of they kind of do steer into the the fan. So maybe they'll do a little homage. They'll do something. They'll It'll be dedicate. dedicated to him. Yeah. Dedicate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinity War. Oh, Infinity will War. they dedicate Infinity War to him, or will they dedicate Miss Marvel? I reckon Miss Marvel comes out first. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Comes I reckon out first. it. I reckon it'll be. Infinity I reckon. War. I reckon all of the films will have some form. They may even change the opening scroll. You know, the Marvel logo it might have his face now in there somewhere. Yeah. Or... yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it'll, it'll either be Infinity War or they'll do something more permanent. But at least Venom was in his last cameo. That's that's obviously something. None of you have seen Venom yet. Nope, no, yet. no intention. Nope. Um, right, we're going to have to move on. Um, so rest in peace, Stan. Um, Generally gutted. Yeah, yeah. So um, in this week's main topic, uh, we're going to be discussing um, if video games um, incite violence. Obviously not. Like it's been scientifically proven. No, they don't. It's all about. It's like it's 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 mental health slash your upbringing. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would agree. Like if yeah. pe- people who have done violent th- things and subsequently blamed them on games, like school shootings and whatnot, who have blamed them on games. have had bad upbringings, yeah. and if they did it without video games, they'd be blaming it on Poor something parenting. else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like, I like to look at it and think that, you know, um, anything... I mean, if, you, if you're going to say video games incite violence, then you could really say that anything incites violence. Books, film, mm-hmm. TV shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, okay, you get to live the video game in terms of you get to engross in well, the, the role. But I don't think that... I mean, you do it you do in every sort of media. You end up becoming the characters that you're reading or you relate to the people on the TV. But that doesn't mean necessarily mean that you know, no one's ever been blamed, or they watched Predator and they've gone out and killed somebody and blamed the film well. industry. There was the guy. There was a there was a shooting of some form. I'm, I'm gonna. It's really bad because it was a major one, and he blamed it on thinking that he was in the Matrix. 
Right. So that's a movie. There was a guy a who Joker thought, one. There was a guy who thought he was the Joker as well. It might be the same one. I'm not sure, but they they. So I didn't hear about that. I suppose there was that recent shooting at that um, esports. That, yeah, that he magic, lost. Yeah, yeah, he lost that. in a Madden tournament and went in and shot a lot of people and I then shot himself. That, yeah. But then that's that's a that's a football game. It's not a violent video game. It's that was who that person was and. You look at the kind of videos of this guy. He won the tournament quite a lot, and there's lots of videos of photos of him. And he's a very awkward person who who stays looks... and plays games all the time. No, well, yeah, but he just looks like he has. He looks like he had some pre-existing social issues. Anyway, mm-hmm. it wasn't like, oh, I lost Madden, and because of this game, I'm now going to go and shoot everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think there's, you know, and even the most violent video games aren't. Like you never want to, you never want to do them in. Well, your I life. played, I played Manhunt back on the PlayStation Two. Yeah, too. yeah. Like that was, and and I'm talking about the Manhunt that wasn't even censored, but like the real. I mean, I was a I never, kid. No, I no, shouldn't no. have played it. That was Rockstar. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like early Rockstar. But like, yeah. looking at that game, <clears throat> I mean, I was, I was subjected as well to like, I watched Predator early and RoboCop mm-hmm. two early, and I know I shouldn't have, and Terminator and whatnot. But, but you've turned out fine. Well, I've turned out fine. That's what I mean. Well, but, <laughs> but I think you, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I just think it's an interesting topic because I know uh, a few months or is it a year or so back, I know when Trump got in, um, he, he, he did have a little bit of a, of, a, of a go at the video games, industry, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Where he um, he created a montage, or somebody in his in his team created a montage of violent things in video games. And yeah. then what happened was, is I think someone in response created a, a similar video but with all the beautiful things that happen in video yes. games yes it's funny you should say that because I know you shared it and I shared it but uh, Sunday mm-hmm. on the I think 11th hour blah, blah, on Battlefield oh, all yeah. the players stopped shooting yeah I heard about this yeah, yeah. so there was a, a group of players who were playing the new Battlefield 5 beta mm-hmm. and it, how, they were playing it during like 11 o'clock on the 11th for the 11th yeah. how, how many people are in the game so like it's this, a, I think it's sixty four. Yeah, there's well. like sixty four, but it looks like it's about a group of like a small battle that was going on on a large map. That looks like there's about 10, 15 of them, and they all stop. But then there's those like there's those kids. Someone flies over in a plane and tries to kill them all. Like it wasn't the entire map. Yeah, yeah. just stopped. It was this small group of people did it, and some other people tried to ruin it because you know that's yeah. what people are like. But it was cool. It's like it, 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 I heard about this. There are some nice moments, like uh, when Leonard Nimoy died. Mm-hmm. Star Trek Online. Mm-hmm. Uh, loads of people went to oh God, Vulcan. Vulcan and they've got a statue of Spock or, uh, on, the, on the planet on the yeah. planet I don't know That's if they had going. I don't know if yeah. they had it before or after he died I uh, know they put the they put the, spa, the statue statue they put the statue of Spock in after Leonard Nimoy died but when we he went did die all the all the players went to Vulcan this digital version of Vulcan mm-hmm. and all just hung out there and because yeah, we went we went and did. It, we went to the statue and we sort of played I've not out played Star Trek Online. We, we enjoyed it, but we I, were playing with two I, uh, people that didn't. <laughs> it was enjoyable, but it's a bit of a mess. It's like a, it's an MMO and there's just a lot yeah. going on and a lot to remember. <laughs> Warp factor does come into it because if your ship is a lot faster, as we found out with someone who hadn't played the game as often as us, because me and Harry played it quite a bit, yeah, and we game. got Warp 10. Let's just say we got like maximum warp was like warp nine. We don't upgraded our ships to be faster. Yeah, in, and in, then in normal speak, it was like it was similar to when we started GTA and you had rubbish cars. If you had a really good car at the start of GTA, you got to everything and you had to wait for your friends to catch up. It was literally this, and you could see your lit friend in the distance, and you had to wait five minutes for them to catch up because the world was so big. Big to start a mission, you had to go into the planet or orbit the planet as a group. So you had to all be there. So if two of you have got really fast ships and one of you is really slow, you'd like floating around this planet waiting for your friend to turn up for like 20 minutes. So like not only the vi- video games don't create violent people, they create maybe bored people sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you're waiting around for things to happen. I mean, even like the Red Dead is out at the moment. It's a lot of horse riding. Oh, it's a lot. Oh, it is a lot of a horse lot of, riding. You know, so, you know, it's not violent. But yeah, that's, I mean, I don't, people aren't hopefully going to get bored and go, oh, I'm going to go pick a gun and shoot someone because of it. But I'm playing Red Dead a lot more carefully than I do play GTA. Yeah. Because well, I, yeah. obviously my car... Apart from the odd tree in GTA that seems to be indestructible, mm-hmm. um, the world, everything in the world can kill you in Red Dead, and you can kill everything. As I was in uh, the main city, 
and I was just walking down the road and a stranger ran up across the street into another alley mm-hmm. and he's being chased by a lawman. The lawman runs into my horse. I get in trouble. Oh, I've heard about this in Saint Denis. And I was just like, what the? But it's like, uh, I just leave the horse outside the town now I've and I it, walk yeah. around. But it's... Well, do you know at the beginning of the game, well, what you happened to you, we, we take each other yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, we all did the I same went, thing. Yeah, we went to give the horse back to the guy that we'd borrowed temporarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we accidentally hit him and not the whole town just turned on us. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, for God's sake. Yeah. <clears throat> the violent video game, like, stigma, mm-hmm. I think more works in reverse where the people who have the issues mm-hmm. and do the horrible things, it gets blamed on the games when it actually also works in reverse where the people who do the horrible things and have these bad upbringings or mental health issues also are quite clever people and in this day and age can create video games. Mm. And recently there's been this game banned from Steam where somebody made a school shooting simulator. They tried to make it... They tried to kind of style it off the way Siege plays where you have... So there's a school and you can either play as a school shooter, a kid shooting up a school, or you can play as the police... And it's, and it's up to the police to go in and find the school shooter and the school shooter to kill as many people as possible. It's so hard that is, though, you, you to think about that. Like, well, it's got to have been approved by someone. To it, know, no, 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 no. You can get games on Steam. It's not the app store. Yeah. Do you remember the, the, remember that app years ago? It's horrible to think, like a baby shaker. Someone had this app where you downloaded it and like a baby would appear mm. and to win you had to shake the baby to death on the phone as an app yeah I think someone, I live a sheltered life someone well no it was yeah, just yeah, I'm yeah. ready I just read it I'm ready and someone had created that and I was like I was like, who created that so I'd spent hours it's thinking like, yeah. this, I think I think the problem no, I don't think that's, that's not a problem with games no I know yeah. someone could write a book about that someone yeah, could write a can. movie about that it's the, the tools are there for everyone yeah, to it, use it's messed up people can also be clever and learn skills yeah so they, they and they have they think it would be funny and they don't have that upbringing to know that that's wrong. So they create a game. And the thing with games is you control them. So you're giving people the opportunity to simulate something where a movie just shows it to you and you can... But even by watching a movie, you're allowing the event to happen. Well, you relate, don't you? Yeah. You, yeah. you can um, put yourself in... I mean, you do put yourself in the killer's shoes or you put yourself in the victim's shoes. Either yeah. way, and you think, God, it's horrible either side. And it makes you go, oh, what yeah. one does Those the exam- uh, example from last week, Fight Club... Yep. Because kids watch that, and I think you said it, or Ben said yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kids would go behind like the school gym and do like a lunchtime fight club. Was that happening but, at the time? Oh, yeah, yeah. People so, did that, and it was like that's just kids. Obviously, yeah, the majority yeah. of the <clears throat> way that say games in uh, violence is mm-hmm. it's because it's parents mm-hmm. because of the kids. But if you think of the games that Say, like, for example, me and Harry used to play when we were probably seven and that. It used to probably be Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I'm trying to think of others. Altered Beast, Street Fighter. Now, fair enough, they were fighting games and I played that. Mortal Kombat, which more, is... Yeah. So did I. Mortal Kombat was the most controversial I, did, I wasn't one. allowed Mortal Kombat. I was, <laughs> I was, I was playing Torok Two Seeds of Evil when I was about nine. You know where the cerebral ball comes Drill, out and drills, drills into, into someone's people. head okay. and then drills into the brain and then spits the brain yeah, out onto the yeah. floor. One of the best yeah. weapons in video games. But and Mike hasn't de- decapitated deca- anyone. Yeah. Yet. Do you know what I do think though? And I, I, I'm probably going to get a bit of controversy or a bit of stick from this, but I do think that this, the parents are to blame for letting their kids buy or come into contact with games that have got 18 certificates on them. 100%. Yeah, I was in game when that actually happened. Coming from someone who... Ha- I know my parents, they're not very educated my, my, in terms of this is like a generation that didn't grow up with video games. Yeah. We will obviously have a better idea and understanding when we have kids. Yeah. But my mum and dad, they just, I mean, they see me watch Robocop when I was a kid, they didn't like it, but they didn't sort of freak out and banish me. Or, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, I think today, especially with Call of Duty and very, not Fortnite, very addictive games for kids yeah, as well. It's not necessarily the violence, is it? It's addiction. Yeah. I mean, we play a lot of games, but we know the house needs cleaning, got to go to work. Well, I've been, been on my Xbox playing the game for like three days this yeah, week. Yeah, same here. I've had other stuff to do. Same which... here, yeah. And yeah, and I've got, the, and we need to finish Red Dead for next week's spoiler cast, and it's just, but yeah, I do think that this, I, I don't know how that they're going to get around it, because, well, what was your story in game, John, that you just mentioned? Well, uh, I, funny enough, I was 17 mm-hmm. 
and I wanted Grand Theft Auto because I was I was the youngest one in the year, August baby, so I'm the youngest one in the yeah, year. Yeah. So I went with Ollie to buy my Grand Theft Auto because I couldn't buy it. They wouldn't let me buy it. So I sent Ollie in with my money and he went to buy it. And while he's buying it, this kid comes up to the counter with Red Dead and not Red Dead, GTA mm-hmm. for whatever which one it was. And um he went, well, you can't buy that. And well, mummy's buying it for me. And, she, and the count, the guy was basically saying, you do realise this is an 18? I went, it's to, got... To the parents. To the parents. She went, you shouldn't be buying this game for your kid. Obviously, he couldn't say no because the parent's buying yeah, it, not yeah. the kid. But he was like, really, I should refuse you because I know you're buying this for and your kid. And that's where he should have the power to do yeah. that. That's where he should put... He couldn't. It's, it should be essentially like buying alcohol yeah. for a mm. minor, but yeah. that's... Because she wasn't buying it to play it. She was buying it for the kid to play. And he went, there's sex, there's violence, there's yeah. gang warfare, there's torture. Because yeah. I think this was... No, it, it wasn't the last... Four. It, it, it had, had to, to be four. four. I never played four, you know. But it was like... One that I never played. Four. They wouldn't let I, me have it at 17. Hang on a second. Can I just stop you there? Yeah. <laughs> Mike's just said GTA 4 was the only GTA he's never played. Yeah, in terms of the story, I've played every other story. I played GTA Five story, San Andreas, Vice City Three. I never played Grand Theft Auto Five online because I was too busy playing Siege and PUBG and other things. Carry on, John. <laughs> you bastards! <laughs> I'm never gonna live it down. Well, well no, because never... the online mode. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna keep shooting your horse. In Red Dead. The online mood. I'm just yeah, oh, yeah, Red Dead. Yeah. <coughs> so the but, online um, mode was one of the best parts. You'll find out when we play the Red Dead version of it. Yeah. There we go. But um, it was like, I couldn't buy it. I was 17, quite very close to 18, because it came out not far away from my 18th birthday. But, but you had to use your friend. I to had to go it. get a friend to get it, because they wouldn't serve me, who was quite clearly very close to being 18. Mm-hmm. But they would serve... A woman who was clearly buying it for her child, mm-hmm. who was stood right next to her. I wasn't even in the so shop. I wonder <laughs> if you'd have gone in with Ollie and stood next to Ollie. He, no, he would have said, "I just you just tried to buy it, and I stopped. Wouldn't let you have it." He yeah, would have. Yeah. Oh, that's why I left the shop. See, that's happened to me before. I'm sure I've gone in with a friend, mm-hmm. and he's gone to buy it. I have then. also been ID'd for a game I'd after have, yeah. when I was 18. I was ID'd for something else. It, I can't remember what. Going back well, for me, it was the cinema. I know it's a, not a game, but yeah. what you just said with the ID, I went to try and watch The Matrix Reloaded, and I went with my dad and my mum, and my dad was like, watch your, watch your dad at birth, and, what, you know, and I'll, uh, in the car. Practice, practice your we faith. Loved, we watched, I don't think I ever well, really got We watched ID The Matrix, film. and I, I watched The Matrix with my dad. Again, I shouldn't have been watching The Matrix, but I did. We, th- we both loved films, and we both thought it was amazing. Um, and we wanted to see the sequel, number two. And I remember going to the cinema, and... Quite rightly so, she ID'd me. Um, well, she said, um, how old are you? I told her my age. She told me, what was my, what's my date of birth? I said, blah, blah, blah. And then the clever cow said, what year are you in at school? And it just completely threw me. <laughs> I was like, 11? And I, don't, I, I don't know what, I think I said 10. And then she said, oh, you'd be... My dad was like, he thought it was hilarious. He was like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> what about what about the opposite of this? We were talking about parents who let their three-year-old kid... Oh, so for the course of my job, I have seen a parent let their three-year-old kid play GTA Five. Oh, I can imagine. And not yeah. been able to say anything because it was my job. It mm-hmm. just baffled me. But what about the other side? What about the parents who are like anti-games? They don't let their kids play games with their friends. They don't let their kids play games full stop because they think their kids are going to get lazy. Mm-hmm. Why should you be inside playing games? They're horrible. No, you're not playing games. Well, unfortunately, it's tough luck. In my opinion, it's discipline. If your family, if you don't forget, you're under that house. You're under that roof of those parents. Mm-hmm. It's their roof. It's their house. Yeah. It's the same with kids. With parents that don't want their kids to eat McDonald's. But what's your opinion on like not letting kids play okay. games on the basis of they think kid games are? Some people do it. Like it's just I don't think there's anything to stop kids playing. While it's unfortunate, they're not essentially missing out on life, really. Go and be a um, teenager. Go and be men and girls or whatever yeah, you're into. Essentially, going. they're probably getting more of a... It depends if they're blocking them from all social and they're basically locking them in the cupboard. That That's obviously... I think a different I've, conversation. I think online has a massive part to play yeah. today. Yeah. Whereas I grew up with the N64 and mm-hmm. the Sega and whatnot, and you got your game fixed pretty quick. 
or you, on a Friday night when you go out and you play split screen golden eye with a couple of your your mates friends, in the street yeah. you get your yeah. fix but then you'll go out and play in the street and play football whereas now online yes it's fantastic that you can play online with like us we all sit on and chat and joke mm-hmm. sometimes it saves us a journey you live a bit further than us Harry but I think yeah when it when it gets to like uh, today kids are just consistently on yeah. Yeah. games like, and I don't think it's helpful <clears> the right, it is the flip on that like parents say oh you play too many games why don't you go out and so well, and play same if you're watching telly but yeah, yeah. There are people that will watch EastEnders, yeah. Emmerdale, yeah. Coronation Street, yeah. Strictly Come Dancing, yeah. Extra Strictly Come yeah. Dancing, Celebrity... They'll and watch those programmes religiously. And we don't watch TV. And all, that TV <laughs> yeah, but, and all that type of TV, all that TV that's just on in the afternoon, I don't care, anyone listening wants to hate me for this, all that kind of TV is really stupid, unintellectual stuff. None of it is very smart or provoking. It doesn't teach you anything. It doesn't make I you I will think. say... It's brain-dead TV. There, it is, obviously, TV for pumping out TV. So but that they do, technology. obviously... Let me, let me finish my point. Yeah. Because games like Minecraft mm-hmm. are the equivalent of when I had Lego, the creative yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of stopping your kids playing those things because the games sit down and spend some time with them and create yeah. some stuff with have a moment with but your child it's educating those parents to do that exactly. we will know yeah. we will know yeah. but the, uh, other parents did but you're right what you're saying but I just want to add to what you just quickly said you're right what you're saying but then you could say that Call of Duty is kind of mindless yeah, absolutely I agree and that's is. the equivalent of watching mindless TV but yeah. then you could watch like uh, Planet Earth with David Attenborough <sighs> and I would compare that to like uh, uh, sort of like that's in, that's an intelligent program that's teaching people something yeah. and then I compare that to Minecraft which is an intelligent game yeah. which teaches people building and yeah, yeah. resource yeah. management uh, etc yeah. on Call of Duty Call of Duty when it first came out mm-hmm. you, that it was essential the way it, it was a game but you had the story of it the oh, new yeah. Call oh, of Duty right. don't have it like, do you mean it was a historical it was a historical historical yeah. game like you st- I think the first one was you storm the beach in Normandy, or am I thinking Call of? That was Medal of Honor. That was but Medal it was, of Honor. It was the, it's the same thing. But same thing. They were, front you line. actually was like that was a great game. Yeah, you actually were taking part of the stories and battle. The last battlefield was, I thought, the online I got a bit boring because it was the same old mm. thing. Which fair enough. No, I really enjoyed it. But yeah, yeah, but um, playing the stories of the missions of those actual people. Different stories. So, so yeah, so what you say is Battlefield 1, the campaign was like a chunk of different stories and you played different people and those were all real people and real... They were probably like over action. Uh, yeah. Did you guys finish but, them? I never got around to finish them. Uh, I finished probably about half of them. I just, the tank one and that It's games of gold, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. it's games of gold. It's so very, very good. It's very good. I downloaded uh, one of the season passes for Battlefield 1. It was free not long ago. Yeah, it was free last two weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah, um, I think it, it comes down to the people as well, um, and oversaturation. I think because the amount of kids that are playing Fortnite, but then it also comes down to parents. Like my mum, when she thought I had enough, like it's like WWE, they have to put "Do Not Try This at Home" on them because there yeah, are people course, stupid yeah. enough. Bleach. They have to put. They have to put on bleach. Do not drink bleach because nuts. enough people have drank bleach. How many nuts? I mean, yeah. we can go on about this there's loads but, of so I don't think it's the game I think it comes down to people unfortunately I think there's a lot more I don't want to say stupid people but I think there's probably a bit more influential people okay. in the world than there are sensible people I don't want to delve way. too much into American politics but what I will say is I think whether you agree with it, with it or not America has guns a lot of guns. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> and I think, I think as well, um, I think the worst part of it is, is that um, they have access to these guns. Yep. So, like you just mentioned, there are these mentally unstable people, unhinged people, obviously disturbed people, and they have access. I mean, we, if you are like that over here, you've got a knife, okay, it's not a, it's, it's a horrible tool, mm-hmm. or a bat or something, or a bludgeoning tool, but you can't go down to the corner and get a gun. Have you seen? Which is which is why I think part of the problem in America is like they're getting guns and shooting up towns and and in, it's like stop blaming an industry yeah. that is full of so much good. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. You know you, you uh, yeah so oh, yeah have, you have, have the beauty. Of have it. you ever heard of the comedian Jim Jeffries? No. Right. He Maybe. does he does this 
amazing little piece on one of his shows about gun control and it is spot on perfect i highly advise if you've got netflix it's on netflix it's on jim jeffrey's bear that's the name of the show Mm -hmm. or if you just youtube that clip it's phenomenal it just says everything that you said and something i'm going to talk about a bit later on as well i'll have to bring up is about gun control in america but that's we'll get there okay we're gonna have to move on (coughs) yep okay we're going to go on to sort of what we're playing, what we're up to. Sorry, I'm really angry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, start with you. Well, can we just do what's happened this week? Cause what what I'm playing is essentially Red Dead. Um, um, I've played other games. But I, 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 haven't played, I haven't played any, anything else apart I've from Pokemon Go. Oh. Okay, Harry, you start then. So I went and saw Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. It's um, it's a good film. It. Mm, in terms of a film, it's the standard biopic. It's it's how the person came to be who they were. Or for and a, what happens to them in the ha, end. How they became successful, their downfall, and then that feel-good ending. It's the same. In terms of films, oh, it has a feel-good ending. Yeah, in terms of... Oh, it's, it's a biopic. So it, they just... His ending's not very good, Harry. Well, if you watch the film, oh, you right, okay. they don't. They, they, they end it at a particular point. Ah, they don't carry on to the and point. They don't, they don't cover... They, they cover it, but they don't... A lab, they it's a credit cover, I would assume. No, so well, it's not really a spoiler because it was a real life event. So the, <laughs> the movie leads up to him joining the band to the Live Aid performance, the big uh, e- exactly. I wish I'd have been alive to see that. Yeah, that happened. That happened six months before I was born. I was fascinated watching this film and seeing the little time logos come up. You know, nineteen eighty five, and I'm like, this entire film, this entire amazing life, pretty much happened before I was born. Yeah. He died in ninety one, but. So and, and the, the movie kind of wraps up its story at Live Aid, and it covers him discovering his ill, but it doesn't cover the whole him dying. You don't watch him die because mm-hmm. that's not really what the film. That's is. what I was worrying about because yeah. I've actually watched documentaries. I've yeah. watched quite a lot actually yeah. over the years where you actually you someone actually reenacts and it's it's quite it's sad. It's not a nice way to go, especially back then when they didn't have the drugs to you know prolong his life. This movie celebrates more than. Instead of giving a historical re- uh, re- retelling, it's mm-hmm. not accurate. They jig events around. It's more, and they dumb down some of the kind of yeah the crazy drug stuff. They they dumb that down. It's well, he was a celebration. Standard of, biopic because he yeah. was he was a massive part yeah, but he also had massive orgies. Yeah. and that's potentially well, it is why he caught AIDS essentially. Yeah. And so those those those. So that's not touched on. It's more of a celebration. It, sort it's of thing. it's hinted at like yeah. there are, there's massive parties yeah. and there's like bits in the background that look like it, those parties may have led there yeah, yeah. but they don't directly they don't, that's good I like yeah there's nothing like wildly uncomfortable it is a film for Queen fans or fans of it and it celebrates him and well, he wasn't I'm sure if you're going into a Queen film you're gonna know that you know he was a homosexual and he, yeah, be yeah, surprised yeah. people are like, oh what's this they're just every, going true, true. every single actor actor nails it well what a casting yeah, it's like Kevin Feige came over from like Marvel because he's been casting great for everything Marvel and said, oh, I'll, "I'll cast a, uh, I'll cast Freddie Mercury for you." <laughs> and he sort of put this guy forward from Mr. Robot. I mean, yeah. wow, well, he and looks he, like like him, doesn't he? Yeah. The, guy, the guy who plays Brian May, mm-hmm. I like. I, I knew when I was watching the film that the guy playing Freddie like wasn't Freddie, mm-hmm. like but only just the guy playing Brian May. I was convinced. They just time travelled Brian May into the movie. He's spot on. Marvel CGI. <laughs> it, it, it's not. It's not even like you know. They could have done that actually. The, the the psychological thing, the uncanny valley, where something looks so close to something but not enough that mm-hmm. it's weird. No, this was Brian May. Does he mime? I don't think so. Because I've heard he sings. He had to sing in front of the, the Queen, Queen crew. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if he sings or what, because he's not. He hasn't got an octave voice like Queen, has he? So I've heard conflicting stuff. I've heard that it Sorry, is like all Freddie him. Mercury. I've heard it is all Rami, or that it is Freddie, but it doesn't sound enough like Freddie. To, it might be an amalgamation of the two. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it might be an amalgamation, but it was definitely want to go watch it. I, 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 I there was a few times in the cinema I had to like, <gasps> like hold it back a bit because I'm a huge Queen fan. I was talking mm-hmm. with my dad and my sister. My dad got me and my sister into Queen, mm-hmm. so it was a bit of like a family thing as mm-hmm. well. So like. Where every time a song comes in, and the first time you hear the, the opening piano to Bohemian Rhapsody, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna, have to, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and cry well, somewhere. What about every time I listen to it? I just think about John Stagg. Do 
Oh, we're all hungover, oh, yeah. driving back from a mad weekend, and uh, we all started singing. Um, but Bohemian Rhapsody, and it was just it was um, and my, my my father-in-law to be, well, my father-in-law now, who was, was driving us, couldn't believe it. He was just like, what "How is you going all know on? the words? This is before <laughs> your time." <laughs> yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. If you like Queen, you'll love it. I, I well, you know, I want to see it, yeah. but obviously, it's having someone to go see it with. I can't believe um, Kate doesn't want to go I, see I'd, it. I'd go with you, but I think Lucy wants to watch it. I think what we'll do, we'll just wait, and I'll get it for us, and the four of us can watch it. If you wanted to do it like that, didn't we do that for um, what was it? We were going to do that for Fallen Kingdom, yeah. but you didn't come round. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were going to do good, it. Good choice, Mike. Yeah, I, I don't I have no it's intention. Not very good at all. How many times can the dinosaurs escape? Yeah. <laughs> Look, let's it's save like, that for another one because I'm not. Do not bad mouth it's, Jurassic. It's like Taken, isn't it? When Ryan Reynolds says, you know, "Oh yeah," like, question his parenting skills when Taken Three came out. <laughs> so okay. Um, um, speaking yeah. of Ryan Reynolds, yeah, um, good segue. <laughs> Detective Pikachu! Yeah, the trailer dropped for that, didn't it? Which, uh, wow! Looks really good. <laughs> it's so, so cute and fluffy! I'm going to ask you guys a question before I started this podcast and you told me to wait. Why did they go with Detective Pikachu right. and not okay. Ash so, and Misty and Brock? When Pokemon came out and was huge, was it was amazing. like the early 90s, mid 90s. Yep. And since then, its biggest fan base. What are you doing? Its biggest fan base. John's on his phone. Just Always. For everyone listening and knows him, John's on his phone again. I'm ordering my dinner. Right, so Pokemon's biggest fan base have kind of grown up with Pokemon, and it's never really stayed as a kid's thing. Mm-hmm. So if you were to release a really kid's movie now, mm-hmm. you wouldn't really get... It wouldn't be that popular. No, what, he, no, what he's asking, what Mike's act, actually asking is, why haven't they done the story, a live-action Ash story? Because... That's what I'm about to... That's what I'm explaining, but... I suppose I hear what you're both saying. I think you're basically saying, Harry, that they're hoping that kids will obviously watch this because there's a lot of kids. Because Pokemon, yeah. But there are going to be pulling on the nostalgia strings of us. Yes, and which made, helps. And, and the Detective Pikachu story is a bit more of a an adult a, you know, adult story. Run me through this Detective Pikachu because I don't it, know it's what the whole just a Nintendo game. Yeah. So Pokemon's obviously this big thing, and you've got your standard games. You've got your red, your blues, your yellows, and then it goes in the different spectrums. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Sun and Moon, blah 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 mm-hmm. blah. And then they've got other games like they've got Pokemon Snap, which was a different it's game. A, it's a spin-off game. It's a spin-off game. So they had, and it's got a story to it, and it is a talking Pikachu See, in that. This I've is going to be it. fucking huge, yeah. I reckon. And I, where they're going to go from here? I don't want Detective Pikachu too. This is this is um. Well, maybe he could be Ash. I don't know. Is he Ash? No, he's not Ash. Oh, he, that would have been no. Cool. It, it's set in a different part, but like I've watched like the IGN breakdown of the world, and there's like. There's, they've seen 32 or something yeah, Pokemon in this. the trailer so far. But then you've got the posters and the neon lights, because obviously it's got a very Tokyo kind of feel yeah, yeah. to it. Which I like. Um, I like that, yeah. Well, it should be. It's yeah. Obviously, what it is, it's Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they're like, the whole world is in, and there is Pokemon battles in the world, because he's got the Johto tournaments and the Kanto tournaments posters in his room. Right. So. That world is there now. Whether Ash is still in this yeah, world, I just don't see why they've done it. I just so all the, that to explore. You've just explained to me the tournaments are trying to growing up and becoming the best. Mm-hmm. That's a series of movies and series, and they've gone down this detective well, thing, which looks amazing, by the way. They've done a lot with Pokemon this year. Obviously, Pokemon goes still thing, and that's had a resurgence because mm-hmm. obviously you now got friends and trading and that, mm-hmm. but. They, it was the 20th anniversary this year, so they re released they did a movie, but they did a movie with a new style, art style, and it was a retelling of basically Ash going to the Johto? No, Kanto. The first Pokemon League that he goes to, I think it's Kanto, I can't remember. I, I, so they, re- nothing about they retold it, but they put like all the Pokemon that you've experienced over the last 20 years, it's, Scattered into this new movie, which was essentially the first gen, the first Pokemon series. So they redid that, and a lot of people will be, oh god, are they going to reboot the series? Because a lot of people's issues with the series, because it's kind of a lot of the fans are still adults, mm-hmm. essentially. That's why this movie, yeah, looks the way this is why the movie looks. Because one of the things that people have is, why the hell hasn't Ash grown up? 
He's still 12. Mm. He's been going for 20 years. But they've aged Misty and Brock, sort of. Mm. Not, like, aged them like where they're, like, 21 and he's still 12. It's not like that. But they've kind of made them look like time has passed. But not Ash. But not Ash. Time. They've even made him look weirder in so the new art style. So Ash is still going? Ash is still going. It's, like, season... Oh, well, I don't know what this seasons. They do it in God, they do it in the games. So essentially, when a new game comes out, there's a season. There's like about four seasons of Pokemon that goes with it. Yeah, see, for me, it was season so, Generation One, Generation Two. And that I was it. Yeah, I watched the first no, Gen, Gen One. I watched up to Orange Isles. So this yeah. this might help you understand why this movie is the detective and why they've gone this route. Mm-hmm. It's written by mm-hmm. one of the writers of Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. so it's going for that tone where okay. it's. That kind of comedy, this like... I can imagine the comedy. It, I think it fits right in. Yeah, 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 yeah. sweet. Yeah. So I'm read. I, I had no interest in it. I thought it was going to be absolutely nonsense ridiculous. And it's Lego movied me. Yeah, I, oh. when he says, um, you can understand me, and the, 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 the expressions of Pikachu's face... And Ryan Reynolds, and then when he goes, "Can you understand him?" and he's asking, and then and then he just goes, "Pick up, pick up." And I'm like, "This is gonna be so fucking good." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think luckily Detective Pikachu can do that because he does talk to the character yeah. in the game. But they, they could have done it with. But you didn't even necessarily have to be Detective Pikachu. No, no, no. It's a movie about. It's a bit like Doctor Doodle. It's a movie where a human can understand animals. It's just these animals happen to be Pokemon. Yeah, but hold on. Isn't that the same with most trainers? Do the trainers not understand all their Pokemon? Like, no. like the film's suggesting? No. Ah, right. Okay. See, I always thought Ash. Does he know Pokemon? Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> when you, so when you were a kid and you Ash, hear, hear Pikachu talk to Ash, yeah. you just think he, he he can understand Pokemon. Ash understands Pikachu the same way that Han understands Chewie. Yeah, okay. He doesn't hear it's Pikachu. Yeah, we don't hear Pikachu talk in English. Like yeah, in okay. The, in this movie, he hears Pikachu talking in full English. Okay. So it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, yeah. So the, the way they've made them live action as well, it's just very very pretty. It's spot on. But we're not. Um, we're not going to get the gym. You don't scenes. see what we're going to get. In we've the seen. A, we've seen like a two-minute trailer that doesn't really show you anything, but mostly the beginning of the film. It shows Charizard chasing him. Yeah, well, some... they, someone's uh, IGN basically said that this could be the start of this whole series kind mm. of thing. So he could, at the end of the thing, want to become a trainer. Yeah, you don't that, know. That to me, well, yes, you don't know. I, um, I mean, it's in the, it's in, it's in the trailer. And that he wanted to be yeah, a trainer, but he could to, decide to go. Well, that's away. obviously where the film's going to yeah, go, isn't it? Yeah, like, I reckon. Yeah. Well, well, the, the, the first like quarter of the film where they're they looking yeah, for his dad. Look at the budget of this film. This is not a one-off. No. This is going to be. It's going to start off this whole universe thing. So there'll be different movies, and, that and I reckon thing. he'll get it right yeah. as well. This, this movie will failed. end with him in an arena in a tournament. With Pikachu, with no hat on. Whatever. Get rid of that <laughs> fucking hat. <laughs> Both the hats. Um, but yeah, that happened this week. Uh, which And then obviously Toy Story. I, had, I, I, I delved into an old game for the first time in a while, and something quite magnificent happened randomly. I, I played Left 4 Dead 2 this weekend, mm-hmm. randomly. We played that. We've had, me? Yeah. We played that a couple of months ago. Did we? Yeah, did yeah, you Yeah, he played the screen at mine. Oh, okay. I wasn't there. So I played. I played. I dive... You played split screen with us while he was at mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I played. Okay. I played. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> you don't remember? No, no, no. Yeah. So I played Left 4 Dead this weekend. And it's quite a funny game. As I'm loading up the game to just just to play it, I press too many buttons. Yeah. And you know when you sometimes you're pressing too quick and you end up in matchmaking by mistake. Mm-hmm. And because no one's playing Left 4 Dead, there was like one game going, so I instantly got matchmaked into it, instantly to the loading screen, so I couldn't just back it. Just punch the microphone. I couldn't just back out. I had to let it load and get in the game. So I got in the game, and it was at the very end of the level in the shopping centre where yeah. you fill up the car. Ah. Yeah, it's so good. So I go down in this elevator, and I'm like, oh, I'll back out. But there's these chaps here, so I'm going to punch them in the face and shoot them a little bit and then leave. And I start to melee them, and instead of just going bosh, the gun goes and just like vibrates. I'm like, what's going on here? Start shooting one, and the gun's like going a thousand miles an hour. I'm like, God, the game's glitched. What's going on here? And then as the elevator opens, the two people with me crouch down and then zip out really quick. And I'm like, am I in a modding? I was randomly in some cheater's lobby. So like I did the entire kind of last bit with them when they're che- like they're zipping around, moon gravity's on. They, you can just, all the zombies are hoarding. You're just doing this like vibrating 
He should have recorded this. Um, I should have recorded it. Poking with a gun. So I left after after I'd done that. I thought oh, that was a cool thing to happen. I'll leave and play the game I wanted to play anyway. Loaded into an offline session, and I think my Left for Dead game is now infected because those cheats stayed on. Ah, oh, right, okay. And achievements were still active. Okay. So I knocked out a couple of the hardest achievements in the world on on Left for Dead. Really? With all these cheats on, yeah. Johnny's absolutely fuming now. That, it just, just like, it was like <laughs> I was like, I wonder if I go into an offline realistic realism game I can go through and do it with just a melee weapon yep don't you remember are you, are you, what I love doing is shooting the screamers right when they were by John that's what I used to do sc- oh the, 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 yeah, the yeah. crying witches thing oh the witches yeah and, and yeah, John yeah. would go don't shoot them and I'd go ha, ha, ha. do you remember John you remember don't you? I, I remember but they do come after you yeah I well, know but <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter so and then you... after that you're like why didn't you tell me if you don't shoot them you get an achievement we did it's just a nice little random coincidence. See, and now you remember it. This 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 eight year old game that I randomly happened to jump back into one Saturday night and I end up in like a, a hacked game. It was okay. really interesting. Um Okay, we're gonna have to go uh, move on to our film discussion now. Oh <laughs> So our film discussion, um for I those like of, you, of you that don't know, um was John's pick last week. Um and it was Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. So, what are our thoughts and impressions? We're going to start with Harry. I'll start with John, because I have a rant. Okay. Well, it was my film. I liked it, so I picked I'll, it. I'll, yeah. st- I'll start. <laughs> yeah. I'll start. Okay, so, I watched it. I watched it today, actually. I had a busy weekend. We, we're filming this a day... We're recording this a day late. Yeah. So, if we'd have filmed this, recorded this yesterday, <laughs> you wouldn't have watched it again, know, would you? I know. Yeah. I, know. I, 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 I realised that when I was in Merry Hill. Yeah. I, was, I was shopping um, to everyone who wants to know what Mary Hill is um, and I thought I haven't watched the film and then I had to listen to the podcast because I didn't have my, my notes with me you didn't even remember what the film was I didn't was. remember what the film was right sorry John but I've, I've watched it now and first of all uh, my positives of it all I thought the car I mean they don't make cartoons like that anymore in my opinion I love I love the art style of, uh, of cartoons like that I mean you go back to like um, if anyone's ever watched Akira and um, mm, that's really the good. original. Yeah. Um, I mean, Akira's a man. The, the art, the, that form, mm-hmm. and um, um, Ghost in a Shell. Mm. Those early nineties, uh, late eighties style of cartoon. This is written all over Batman: Mask of the Phantasm. I thought it was dark. I thought the rain. It was great. I got confused that, uh, when I was watching it because I thought Batman was getting beat. And I realised it was, well, he was starting out, wasn't he? It was flashbacks to when he yeah. was first. It essentially was, in a way, a Batman origin film. At yeah. the same time, it took elements of year one Batman with him, obviously putting on the balaclava yeah, and, yeah. Whatever and stopping a robbery. But it was, um, I saw that side of him that I've not really seen in any other, I mean, comic or, you know, game or any other portrayal of Batman where he he was in love with this woman I know he's always in love with um what's her name Catwoman yes Selena Kyle Selena Kyle but um he's obviously in love with this woman she affects him really bad um and then yeah and and it's just his he you know he, 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 he it's his transformation into obviously the Batman and yeah it's you later find out that I, so I thought it was one of the um the old uh, mob bosses that 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 was uh, the, the the villain the phantasm the phantasm yeah. yeah and then I thought well maybe I thought that the phantasm um I thought he was good but I don't know I just I thought the Joker was the best part of it the Joker is the best part of yeah, that entire yeah. film and it's probably why well why you I said it. last week obviously favorite character one of my favorite characters is the Joker <laughs> and more my other favorite character is Mark Hamill's Joker mm. because that whole scene at the end where it's blowing up around them and he just throws his head back and laughs is like just one yeah, of my favourite scenes mm. um, this is obviously in the much larger world of the DC animated universe because this film is canon in the DC animated universe oh I'm glad you said that carry on well it sort of is because so in Batman, more, in Batman of the Future uh, well, in Justice League Unlimited, which was the TV show that followed Justice League, 
the phantasm makes an appearance because Amanda Waller hires the phantasm to kill. Oh God! Is that phantasm Andrea? Yes, oh, it's okay. an older Andrea, but right. she's brilliant. Basically, oh, so she comes back. Amanda Waller. It, it's only a, camp, a small cameo, but Amanda Waller, when Batman becomes too old to be Batman. Mm-hmm. She kind of like makes a clone of Batman. It's Terry McGuinness who is Batman of the future, and they kind of like a lot of people didn't like it, but she got an ordinary couple, uh, kind of like altered the guy's genes because it was the futuristic stuff, so that it was like Bruce's genetics got passed to the baby. Mm-hmm. So it was essentially part Bruce. And she says, now you've got to create a Batman, and our Batman's created his tragedy. So she hired the Phantasm, which was the lady, to go and kill this baby's parents so he would become Batman, but she couldn't go through with it because she couldn't do... What had happened to him. She said it broke Bruce, so basically I can't... Well, she, you don't hear the conversation, but basically she couldn't do it because it broke Bruce and she wouldn't create well, she Bruce. Well, plays, she plays that in the in the car where, yeah. she, where he goes to her so and does... she, they talk and, she, and she's really hard to him. And, yeah. and then he leaves. She says something really harsh to him and then she le- he leaves and then she sort yeah. of cries. Yeah. So, you can, so that's why I did like that where, you could, like what I said earlier, I like this sort of grandiness too where, you know, that's a love interest that was really important to him and really important to her. And I did like that. I did like to see that part of Batman. Mm. You, you don't really get to see... You do a bit... Uh, this one was more of a Bruce... Well, it was a Batman film, but it was more... This is Bruce Wayne at yeah. the start. You yeah. got to focus more on the Bruce Wayne character. And the character humanity of him. And the humor And how an origin, like, there's the Batmobile yeah, yeah. for the animated series. In this world of the future, and uh, obviously then... Alfred's obviously great because he's basically when he hands him the mask and that eye where his eyes go when you handed him the mask you must have measured him for the mask and knew what it was going to be like well you see him young as well don't you because you see the part yeah. of this is a flashback yeah um, one question um, how does the phantasm create all that smoke that's never explained so yeah. it's, I was it's, watching it's, it again the other day I was thinking, it's something known as a cartoon like uh, yeah I know, you know what I, mean? like, I like realism yeah. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> this is the world though with a Superman and a Flash and all that no, kind of for, how, for how in depth this movie goes into people's motivations and their like, mental health and why they do things it really doesn't go much into the how she became the Phantasm she takes off her costume she's a huge hulking bloke takes off her costume skinny girl yeah it's weird yeah. I, was like, I was like okay they just they, they didn't show the inside of the costume padded it's out. It's like Scooby Doo in like yeah. the, the, what, the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> One of the great things is though, Joe Curtin, uh I can't remember the line he says, but he knows it's her and he goes, hello, put it in or something like that. And he says, well, aren't you very over dramatic? I love it. And he talks bat, to, you could eat Batsy Poo. He talks to too. the robot that's like cutting, yeah. cutting, and he's just talking to it, he's feeling the robot. And it's just, it's, that's one of the best parts about the Joker in this, where he always seems to be performing for somebody. Like, well, he's us, isn't he? Really? Yeah, like I like the I like the idea that Batman fights for good in the fa- it dressed as like something evil, but the Joker is evil dressed as a friend. He's a mm-hmm. clown. He's a happy mm-hmm. person, but and he's always performing for people. But then when he's on his own, this is how you know he's deranged. When he's on his own, he's still Joker. performing for yeah, for yeah. you know when he, when he kicks that animated that animatronic dog. That made me that made me chuckle a lot. And all the bits with Joker made me happy. Oh well, yeah, it's um, a whole when he. Uh, the mob boss comes to him with the gas and he's like, let's go for a ride, oh, friend, and they're talking. And then he says something to the Joker and you just see the switch click. I mean, he obviously becomes, and he says, oh, that's it, I just want to see a smile and the whole camera. And the next thing is... What he does to him? He's, like, he's, he's basically given him Joker gas and killed him and, paced, and turned him into a bomb. So, so explain this to me, because you know more of the DC stuff than I do, obviously. Um, whereas I'm more on the Marvel side, but like, that he gives them gas and they laugh themselves to death essentially. Essentially, it's Joker gas. So yeah. uh, it, it, it was in the Jack Nicholson film. Yeah, so Batman, they laugh so... themselves to death. Basically, you know, you know, you know when you find it really funny and you can't stop laughing. Mm. Imagine being chemically induced into that. Yeah, that, that must be terrifying. I thought when he was when that mob boss it was is it the son? It when the, he was laughing on the, t- on the in, in the gurney, you know, yeah. the t- I thought um, he was the accountant. I, yeah, I thought he was going to have a heart attack and die. Mm. In the That's essentially what I think happens to some of. Them, yeah. and obviously well, that's what happened his, to yeah. the mob boss with the gas, isn't it? He obviously, well, he was frail anyway. He just, he, 
Did you did you pick up on how this movie explains how it's Bruce Wayne's fault that every single bad thing that happens in the Batman universe, every, every like the the Joker, anything the Joker does because this movie is Batman's fault or Bruce Wayne's fault. Um, Jason Todd gets killed by the Joker. That's Bruce Wayne's fault. Barbara Gordon gets paralysed in Killing Joke. That's Bruce Wayne's that's fault. That's one of the, the things. I've not seen those films. That, that's one of the things because, uh, and that's the argument that they have a lot in the comics and in other media uh basically when you don't take the step and that's how injustice happens that is essentially what happens in injustice because batman doesn't kill joker Mm -hmm. joker then kills lois lane it's not about killing joker this isn't about killing joker but no he doesn't stop him permanently and that's the argument that people have how is batman's fault in this right if he'll shut up for a second i'll explain (laughs) bloody hell right so there's that amazing scene at the graveyard where Bruce Wayne goes to his parents and he, he starts trying to explain how he's met this girl and he's really happy, but he's promised them that he would become the Batman. He would become the Batman and fight crime. And he puts this pressure, this invisible pressure on himself to be Batman and fight justice. And, and at that point, he was still trying to learn and struggling. But his parents are dead. They never, ever, ever told, agreed with his oath. He says, I'm going to do this for you. His parents weren't there to say, don't. So he's putting, he's that messed up from his parents' death that he's put this pressure on himself to follow this one path of his own. It's like, I am going to do this. No one's going to stop me doing this. And then Andrea comes along and he falls in love with her and he's very happy with her, but he's so focused. And in, in the graveyard scene, you even see him talking to his parents and she turns up mm-hmm. and he shows the parents of the grave on one side, her on the other mm-hmm. side, mm-hmm. and how he turns his back. He, like, he starts to turn his back on his parents. And like, because Andrea is over her mother's death. She's at the mm-hmm. graveyard. You see her happy dealing with it. Yeah, yeah. She, could she te- talks to her mom and he says, who are you talking to? Yeah, and... she could teach him that. She could teach him to get over his problems. On the flip side, her problems are all money related with her father. And Bruce Wayne, instead of throwing all his money into being Batman, could throw all his money into her problems. And the pair of them as a team could get over their issues and have this nice but life. But he's focused, isn't he, on this this obsession? Because doesn't doesn't he when doesn't the, when the bat cave gets revealed, all the bats fly out and sort of like they sort of fly in the air and they point towards the city, and that's kind of like that's kind of yeah. like a yes, yeah. a subliminal message to say this is who you should be a bat what, going towards what he, the city. What he, ends, what, he ends up, what he ends up doing is instead of putting that trust in Andrea. Mm-hmm. He, he can't, instead of going through the long-term route of dealing with his problems mentally over long-term with the help of someone who loves him, he then, he essentially cheats on her with Batman. He goes out and carries on fighting crime. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the equivalent of someone in a relationship being insecure about the way they look. So cheating on them to get that fix, that someone finds me attractive mm-hmm. fix. And then realising after having sex or cheating or going out and being Batman, realising they've done something wrong but can't tell that person because that person will leave them. So they do something called love bombing, which is where they're like overly affectionate, really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't and, do it. Yeah, yeah. And he does yeah. that by asking her to marry him. He's like, oh, what have I done? Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this thing behind the back for my own satisfaction. It's the, the equivalent of cheating. Ask her to marry him. And it doesn't work because he can't just let go. I don't, don't think that. Her. I don't think that. No, not at all. Because he does the robbery before she's even come to his house so he yeah. met her at the graveyard yeah. all that this was was a chance encounter she then thinks that fair enough she's like it's a little bit of her up her own ass but she comes and says we well, haven't called and he was like yeah, i didn't yeah. think i needed I would, to i would have to agree i love so, your analogy yeah I, I get analogy. your analogy and, and that do, is and batman. i do get it it's a very that is good batman analogy. but right. she comes and he, he then there's no other training at that point he doesn't he he doesn't actually go and do anything else he actually has a life sort of with he doesn't go and keep training right and so then why, when why did, she why leaves him... Why didn't you just give him as Batman? Why didn't you just give him as Batman? Because and, he's made well, a personal he made, promise to He made now. a personal promise and he said... But he still loves her. Yeah, yeah. but he can't have both. Yeah. Well, did, she left him. Yeah. She didn't... That's, because... She and then le- how no, is that his fault? No, let me she, it. No, she left him because of her father's problems. If he'd have, if he'd have buggered off Batman and got with her properly and not fucked around, mm-hmm. the money he spends on being Batman... The money, it was a money problem. He could no. put the money into it. They didn't even ask. If they probably asked mm. him, this right. is the thing, this is Bruce Wayne. Because One he, of the kept, things he, he kept Bruce... her arm's length trying to be Batman. No, he didn't. 
He absolutely. If he'd, if he'd have just buggered off the Batman part, he would have been more. No, on he it. really did. You, oh, I think you've got the timeline all wrong. So he does the robbery. This is entertaining. I'm going to have to watch no. it. I'm, I'm he gonna does watch the it robbery again. and point it out. He does the robbery. He gets beat up, but he stops the robbery and the truck crashes. He then get and Alfred does his witty comment, and then she comes in because mm-hmm. he says, "Oh, we're going to have to talk about this later." Yeah, and when then he's, when he's they, karate, then he. She flips him, he sweeps the leg, and then they kiss, and Alfie does that. Like, walk away. Then they start having a relationship. During that time, the only time he go, gets involved is when the robbery happens after the world event where they were, like the world of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And they're coming out, and a store man is getting robbed, where he then basically gets and involved. And he has to intervene. And he has to intervene mm-hmm. to save this person. That's the only time But you that can that tell happens. that he looks at her. And he takes the bat in the stomach because he it's a little bit too convincing. Yeah, that he can fight the way he can fight. But he hasn't the he hasn't done any more Batman stuff because he becomes Batman after she basically sends him the ring saying I can't do this. Yeah, because essentially she's made his choice for him. I agree. I do. She's agree. made his choice and basically mm-hmm. says, "Okay, you were gonna." He's in his head. His choice was Andrea. Bat. Well, he didn't know it was going to be Batman then, but. Well, he was drawing my a promise, picture. He was Andrea, drawing a picture, wasn't he? Of promise, who he could be. And then Andrea left, so it was just his promise. And so as he was said at the start of the film, promise is fear. Bullshit, man. So mm-hmm. how, is it? Well, it's Batman. No, show. I know. I know. I'm not saying it, it was a bad movie, and you're wrong. I'm saying that Batman annoys me. Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Promise well, is so, just no. Just one thing. Have you seen Return of the Joker? The other DC animated film. I believe sort of I Batman. started watching that this week. Ba- it was Batman Beyond. So there is a scene in that where there's a flashback mm. in, and it's flashback back to this style of Batman. Yeah. So it is this Batman. Yeah. yeah. And Joker's done something, and Batman is literally he he's going for the Joker properly. Yeah. And he's found out that after all this time, that Batman is Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. and he's showing clips of what he's done. Like Joker's recorded what he's done because it's Joker. He records what he's done so he can tweet toy Batman and says, "You could have stopped this." And he says, "It's really sad that all after all this time, all you are is some little scared little boy in an alley playing dress up and just starts laughing because he's just summed up Bruce. He's just summed up Batman. He's a scared little boy yeah. so, playing dress up. Yeah, let me. But yeah, you can. Yeah, let me. So, so I'm, I've taken both of your points into consideration. I know I'll give my brief spat of why I liked it. I have a few criticisms. I do agree with some of Harry's criticisms of it. I just think that... And let me finish my point here. I get what you're... Look, so what you're saying is oh, that... If he, I thought it was good. No, yeah, but what I'm saying like is... I Bruce Wayne anymore. No, but what you said about um, if he would have just given up Batman and got with her and focused on her, then his money would have solved the problems. Mm-hmm. Yes, but hold on. His dad, her dad, got them into that shit with yeah. the gangsters. Yeah. That's not Bruce Wayne's fault. That no, was no, her father's no, fault. No, no, and you can't Bruce assume that he, because they've got money, mm-hmm. he would solve all the problems. He'd still wanted to be Batman. And I think that what happened is, is that, yeah, she, because of what her dad done, she then had to pull herself away from him, which yeah. then pushed him into the role more of Batman. Right. Because she didn't want to, well, essentially, she didn't want to get uh, Bruce Wayne involved in the gangster stuff. That's why she said to him, I can't marry her. Mm-hmm. And pushed him away. It's... Hence why you see her later on, and he meets her in the future, and she, when he leaves and they have a bit of a confrontation, she cries on the bed because she still loves him. Mm-hmm. It happened in The Dark Knight. He said he would give up being Batman for... It wasn't Katie Holmes' character. What was it? Rachel. Mm-hmm. Was it Rachel? Yeah. He Maggie said... Maggie Gyllenhaal's. Yeah, Rachel, which yeah. obviously she gets... Spoilers, she gets killed in The Dark Knight. But he basically had... This conversation, he was having this conversation with Alfred saying she was going to, we were going to run off together, she was going to leave yeah. Harvey, and I, and I then, was going to give letter. up the world. And then Alfred burns the letter yeah, because do you he remember? doesn't want to. So Bruce then makes that choice because that choice has been made for him and she's won. It's very true. Because he was like, that. Well, you don't know. Of course, he's watched it. No, I mean again. Because you've been, you've, do you want to see it twice? I've seen it about twenty eight thousand times. Oh, I haven't watched it that many times. Yeah. It's a very long film, and it's no, a, just a, such a good film. You don't. But like, what watch John's it. saying is that it's very. That's a very comparable. He thing. will always go back to being Batman, yeah. like in the comics recently. Uh, he was getting married. He was actually getting married to Catwoman, and they mm. were actually, and it was coming up. And to be honest, DC people off because they released the story to the New York Times before it had even been released in the comics so people knew it was going to end. Mm. 
uh, Catwoman left him at the altar mm -hmm. because she says that Batman can't be happy. There always has to be a Batman. Mm -hmm. So she basically says, and if you're happy, you can't be Batman. So she left him at the altar so he could still be Batman. That's really messed up, man. It is really messed up. And people are like saying, well, he could still be Batman. He can still be happy. He can be happy. He's got a Bat family. He's got... Technically, he's got like four kids I mean, that he's took in. To be too honest, that would have been a great relationship because they both they're both like crime fighting. Yeah, and, and it, it's just it's obviously they've done a spin off coming Catwoman now, but it's like uh, yeah. the whole premise that she leaves him a note that, and he basically Batman goes on this tear now because there's obviously a lot of bad stuff happened in his work. Like she, Selena's left him, then something else bad has happened to one of his uh, allies, and then something. Bad else bad has happened. So he is literally full of anger at the moment. And well, she's basically saying the Batman needs to be mm. angry at the world to be Batman. You cannot be Batman. So, so it comes back to that whole thing that he has to... Well, it's just Batman. So I don't know what's canon, but... Because you, you grew up reading the comics more than I did, but... Well, um, the animated stuff's different. So, yeah, comics. that's what I mean. So uh, I understand this is called kind of an origin story, uh, and, I, and I get that. But for me, and I know I'm going back to a more of a, a, a modern iteration, or should I say, like, a, he was only, was he, when, when did The Dark Knight come out? 2008-ish. The first one? No, Batman oh, Begins. Batman Begins 2005. So I, I still think and love the idea that what happened to Bruce Wayne happened, and then I love that story out where he goes around the world... And he's fighting with all different trainers, training, yeah. training meets Ra's al Ghul, trains. That to me, that that's how he become who he become. That and then you see Bane later on, and then Bane was brought up in this. That that's fantastic. I looking at this cartoon as much as I yeah. enjoyed it. It's you almost to... as if oh, I went out with a balaclava, became Batman. I was conflicting with a okay. woman, and then yeah, you need to watch the animated series because in the animated series, there's loads of flashback ones. To... Like he goes and trains with. Um, Satana's dad become a master uh, escapist. Okay. So he ch learns in the, how yeah, to yeah. escape from the. So that, he goes. He goes to. Yeah. Um, that delves Downland. into the how he gets the tools to become. And this is why he's able to do uh, jujitsu because he's gone and trained. Yeah, he goes yeah. and spends months in Japan yeah. and okay. all that. Okay, uh, fair enough. If yeah. you watch the animated series, that, that it does would, show that. Yeah. I'm just going off the first. This is, just, seen, yeah. Yeah. this is essentially him coming back off the boat in Batman Begins because he does exactly the same thing in Batman Begins. He puts on a balaclava and goes and beats up some guys, but yeah. basically says they weren't scared of me. Mm. So that's, that's the whole. One, yeah. that, that's essentially what mm. it is. It just different environment. To do yeah, it. well, it was interesting. I did enjoy it. Again, I love the art style of it. I, I love stuff like that. The that, music that, was incredible. Yeah, the opera at the beginning. The music. I mean, was that's amazing, class. Yeah. And that's dark and that's gritty yeah. and that's I don't do they make cartoons like that anymore? Probably not in this no. PC era that we live in, but that to me was great. That it was it, it was it was the best it was the best Batman film, but it, like because all the, the live action like the, the Nolan films, they're all really good films with Batman in. Yeah. This was the best Batman film. Oh yeah, yeah. I so, need to I need now I wanna go and watch the Killing Joke and other ones that you've recommended to me I, so like one of the best Batman films, uh, and Kate really likes this one, is Batman Under the Red Hood. Mm -hmm. See, that is an ad adaptation of a comic story. This is this was a is it in canon with that? N not really. That's just mm, no. No. The, there's been like this kind of thing, like the, the Batman animated series links into Justice League, and then Justice League Unlimited, and. Uh, Batman Beyond mm -hmm. that's like one large saga and then S the Superman animated series that's all one universe that's all one universe the cartoon then TV shows are a universe yeah then when they did New it's 52 they can't get when, the DC. when they did New 52 they've started a new mm -hmm. Justice League universe so the, this is the uh, films that we've watched uh, I think we've watched Justice League War which is mm -hmm. which essentially was, should have been the Justice League movie um because it had Green Lantern in it. But um, well, the, the, I don't know the, what I was saying. So he was talking about this Red Hood movie. The reason it's not in this canon is because it's an adaptation of a graphic novel rather than an entry in the animated TV series. Yeah, it's not a just standalone story. In it. Like Mas Mask of Phantasm is an original story. Like there is another Batman animated one, which is like an origin of Mr. Freeze, and that is also a really good one. It's called okay. Batman Sub-Zero, and that's kind of got a really good origin for Mr. F 
Freeze, and that's got Batman and Robin in. It's got his, the Robin in as and well. If you were to watch those in the animated series, they'd all be canon together, but this other one he's talking about is just a standalone adaptation of a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Same as Killing Joke is the same. It's a standalone yeah. adaptation. And then Hush, my favourite Batman graphic novel is Hush, and they're turning that into a, a They're turning a movie. that, I can't wait for that. I love that one. Love it. Hush, uh, if I would recommend a Batman comic to go and uh, read, it would be Hush. As, 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 a, you don't as even, a starter one, if yeah. you know the If you know the basics from Batman Asylum, you know the characters, just go and watch read, watch, read Hush. Which, mm. Is Hush the villain? Yeah. Well, this what? is the thing. You, In Arkham, you, which one is he? We're not not going to spoil you. Just read the comic. Uh, he, he, he's I not, can even he's, lend he, it you. Is it the uh, one that in the game makes he has... himself look yeah. like? Yes. Ah, right. Because that... Can I just say some, one thing? In in Arkham... He is in Arkham. He's yes. in Arkham. He Do you see Arkham. him again? I can't, he, 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 he appears in Arkham Knight, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah but you don't see the full development of yeah. him. As you don't see you this would. whole character... He has Fair a cameo in the game. He has a cameo. They, they they brought it up in Arkham Asylum, but they didn't go fully through with it. I thought they would have done that as a, as a side story in Nights. Yeah, but... Um, the, the, the villain of Hush is almost... Uh, all mediums have kept him in the bank, ready to use him at a later date, I think. He's a really good villain, but they've got... It actually does lead on to another comic, and I have mentioned the film into it uh, in regards to it as well, which, if you read it, it's just... A f- the artwork's done by Jim Lee. Mm. Fantastic... Artwork. It's probably the best. He draws. He's the per- best person to draw Batman in the modern era. Anyway, he's the person that's like taking on uh, DC Creative. So he's doing. He's been all, doing all the drawing for New Fifty Two. He's drawn loads of Green Lantern stuff, and that's fantastic. He did work for Marvel back in like the nineties and that. But his stuff now, oh, you, you just got to read it. I've got uh, one of his books with all his artwork on my shelves, like um, a limited edition one. But uh, Red Hood is definitely something you should. Watch. I know who Red Hood is. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're gonna have to move on. So everyone enjoy. I enjoyed it. It was definitely Ooh, yes. a good watch for me. Um, Just the Joker scene at the end is like, well, the whole fight where he's got his tough knocked out. Did he say, "We'll both die"? So get off me. Next week's film, we got Harry's film suggestion. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be Shoot 'Em Up, directed by. Um, is it Michael? I'm trying to think who it's directed by now. Bay. So, <coughs> Michael Bay, starring Clive Owen, released in 2007. It's not Michael Bay. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's not at all. Right. I have no idea what this is. So, this, this movie is, is a fascinating so, one. Because. Anything to add, Harry? Yeah. <clears throat> because, so it's, I can't even remember who he's directed by because the guy who directed this only really directed this one film. And he was that sick of all the standard action movies of, of the time where good guy would shoot guns at bad guys. And then there'd be an explosion, then a sex scene, and then there'd be another good guy shoot guns at bad guys and repeat that formula. And it was in every movie and it was very boring. So he made this film where... Michael Davis. That's the one. Where the guns in this are not necessarily just guns for shooting each other. They're more of a tool and he does a lot of interesting things with the gun battles in this. And, uh, but this was then marketed to the audience like a generic action film that you'd seen a hundred times, so it bombed. <clears throat> I picked this one because John had a really bad problem with Black Mirror and how miserable it was, so I thought I'd pick something fun this time. I was about to say, uh, that was going to be my question. <laughs> Am I going to have to watch a Disney film after this This movie point? is balls to the wall, fun from start to finish. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, but it's... I haven't heard of it, so okay. it's, yeah. that's and that's why I've picked it. Where can I watch it? Amazon. It's on Amazon. Amazon. It's like an hour and a half. It's absolutely nonsense, bollocks, fun, and it's a good laugh. And the soundtrack is amazing. I'm not expecting you to love it. It's just a good. It's a good hour and a half. But it has a lot to say about what we were talking about earlier about gun control. Okay, which will be something we'll probably pick up when we talk about. So it's it next got week. some relevant, yeah, relevance to this yeah. week's topic. Okay, yeah, good. Um, I've got so many films coming up. When it comes around to my turn, mm-hmm. I've got some really good ones. Really, really good ones. I was struggling because I've had to pick something that I thought I would enjoy. Annie's on a service or a DVD. Yeah, you've, your got, own. You, you've got to pick it somewhere. Where people can well, you, you can, but some of them aren't going to be um, readily available. So you're going to have to no. I, 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 find a way. Oh, I'm just I'm just scrolling through Netflix and Amazon. I'm choosing from there. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like this movie isn't in my top 10, top 20 or anything. I just thought, oh, that's there. That's something to talk about. Boom, we'll watch that. I haven't picked my top, well... 
Everyone, everyone, well, everyone's picking films they love. I'm just picking films I know have so, interesting to yeah, watch. See, see, I'm picking films that I really love yeah. and films that I've, I think you guys will find interesting. But like my next one, which we'll talk next week, that's it's on Netflix and it's a really it's part of the genre of upcoming films that are doing very well at the moment. So we'll we'll get onto that next week. But yeah, looking forward to watching this shooting up. I, I do actually love like stuff. Clive Owen. <clears throat> I, I, re- I really think Clive Owen's mm. great. I mean, yeah. It, what, what, what's Don't more expect to that, but it's just, it's just an hour and a half of fun. Yeah, that's, that's it. fine. Okay, so um, we're going to have to move on to um, guess the character. John's favourite part of the uh, podcast. Am I, f- am I five up now? No, you're four. three up. Four. Four, four up. up. Are you four up? He's yeah. four up. You are four up. <clears throat> John. I've got some buffer and news mm-hmm. now. Come on, mate. Well, I either guess too quickly and don't get it, or I guess too late and Harry's already got it. So... Well. I'll let him have Just like multiplayer games, you're just you, not that good, John. Up. I'll let you have this one this week. You didn't, you didn't like what I just said. Huh? Did you? You can listen to the podcast. Okay, right. Are we ready for Guess the Character? As ready as I am every week, which okay. is not. Okay, so the first clue is as follows, followed by the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. <laughs> we know how numbers are. Thanks for that, Mike. <laughs> All right, some people might not have a clue. What's going on? Some people might not know how to count. Yes. Right. <laughs> Just I could be going up in prime numbers. You, right, you don't okay. know. Short Mike, get on with it. Right. Eccentric. Unpredictable. Opposite. Two face. Ooh. Face paint. Oh. Cards. Clown. Joker. Joker. It's not face paint. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I said it first and we can go into the... Uh, I'm going to give you both a point for that. Yes. Because you both got it at the same time. I knew you'd get it on the last clue. I like how you tried to make it the most possible, easiest one John could possibly get. And I still got a point out of it. <laughs> it's not face, he's not got face paint. It's face paint, John. It's makeup. <clears throat> Don't, don't start him. It is bleached skin. Do you know what's funny? Don't start him. I had to sit here and watch him get so passionate about this week's movie discussion. He was just going to row with us all. It's bleached skin. How do you know that? Because they do it even... Because he's read some random inane comic no, book from the 1970s. No, no, no. no. That joke. Good. And now he's got his phone out for the people who can't see Your phone see should him. not be out in the podcast. Well, it's banned. balls to the wall to you. So just while John's doing his investigative work. About Joker. So you look at so many different iterations of Joker. I mean, you've got you've got the Joker who, uh, who, who, who Jack, in, Jack in Phoenix is going to play soon. And he's got face paint on. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got like Jared Leto's Joker, face paint. Mm-hmm. Heath Ledger. Face paint. Yeah. Jack Nicholson didn't have face paint. Oh no, he's found one Joker one iteration. Joker. Well, we're wrong. That clue was redundant because one iteration of the Joker <laughs> is confirmed to have bleached skin. So it, I've, met, I've known three Jokers that wear face paint, and because what of three Jokers, I just named he them. Just, he just Heath Ledger. Yeah. Yeah. Joaquin, and Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix, who hasn't come out yet, yeah. he may get bleached at the end of the film. Yeah, and. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, Jack Nicholson's character wears pink face mate, what? so he makes himself look Jack normal. What a yeah, that's stretch. what I'm, you just asked me. What three Batman films? Yeah, so... but he doesn't wear Joker makeup. What? Jack Nicholson doesn't wear Joker. I'm not makeup. talking about that. You asked me what Jokers, and I'm telling you what three Jokers. You haven't even let me tell the three Jokers. You haven't let me say the third one yet. Yeah, so, so the first one was Heath Ledger face paint. Okay, the second one was um, Jared Leto. Face paint, and then the third one was um, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, who yes, okay, we do haven't seen the full film, but he wears face paint. <laughs> That's three people. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. There's an iteration somewhere where Joker it has bleached skin, and that's really interesting. But it, but face but, paint was but, a valid clue. Face paint was a yeah. valid clue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he fumbled and fell into a vat of caustic waste without Batman having time to save him. In- this caused his flesh to wither and bleach, his hair to turn green and his mind to shatter. Yep. Can, apart, can, apart, Harry, apart. can you just take my phone and ring Christopher Nolan and tell him <laughs> why? Well, why? Why he fled you face paint? John, 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 says, oil. John says that Joker has bleached face paint, so therefore your Heath Ledger, Ledger Joker was wrong. Jared Leto's going to be really pissed. Yep. And Jackie, what's Phoenix? Jared Leto was 
bleached all over. Was he? Was yes, he? because why do you think he dumped Harley Quinn into the flipping vat? They did the whole mm. diving scene. So where, where did his lipstick come from? Lipstick is not face why, paint. Why wasn't Harley Quinn dyed? She was dyed. Mm. Nope. Yes, she was. Mm. Nope, not why do you that. think they jumped into a vat of acid at um, <clears throat> Ace Chemicals? Nope. Uh, does, does, okay, hold on. No, 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 hold on a second. Okay, yeah, you can smile. I've just, I'm three one up here. You've only named one Joker that's got bleached. Uh, face Jack Nicholson paint. fell in a vat of acid at the start of the film. He's knocked in by Michael Keaton and comes out, died. So that's the really... Joker in oh, like, Killing Joke gets knocked into vat acid, and it's the Joker in the comics gets knocked into. So for clarity here, me and Mike both know that the Joker in canon has bleached skin, yeah. but you're getting angry, and which is why we're no, pushing it. Just, it was just his clue. So, face it's paint. a valid clown. He wears. He He's looks got like a face paint. He looks like a clown. Clowns wear face paint. Yes, it was yeah. a valid clue to the character. John, I still got it. I weren't going to give you the point. I might take it away from you after this absolute catastrophe of a of a tantrum you just presented to I, the crowd. I, I wouldn't disagree. <laughs> I'm still four four up. So, so just a quick question then: if 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 you, what you're saying is that Jared Leto, I mean, the way I read that film was that. They oh, there, I was bleached. Okay, That's I, why you said his chest was white. Can, can, can I finish? Can, can no. I finish? So what I was going to say was, is that that in that film, to me, that that sort of made him a little bit nuts. Crazy. That's a little bit crazier yeah. than crazy. Because why hasn't Harley Quinn, when she's in the cage at the beginning of Suicide Squad, got bleach skin? I, I asked him that question. She has. And he she said hasn't. she has. She has. She hasn't. She Pretty hasn't. sure she has. She, 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 she hasn't. You don't know, do you? Snookered. You don't know, do It you? was a valid clue. Right, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Remember, you can find us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Join us next time for more overthinking. Uh, overthinking media. <laughs> See you later.